In this video, we are going to get the movement set up for our character using a capsule. Click on new project. Let us search for URP. Um, it's still loading. Select 3D URP. And give your project a name. For me, I'm just going to call it FPS. Full body tutorial. Yeah. And just treat the project. I'm waiting for it to load up now. Um, so sorry about the noise. Okay, so it's finally loaded for me. Um, we'll start by creating our ground basically. So, 3D object, we can get our plane, and let me just call it ground. And for the future, let's just add a layer of type ground because we need that. Just set it as ground. Uh, next, we will have to save our project. Doing Command S or Control S and just save the project. Create a folder, call it My Assets. I like to keep this like this because it stays clean. Create another folder inside that call it our materials and finally create the material and rename it to ground mat it's a short form and we will just give it a base map of basic which comes inside the URP itself and just drag it onto our ground. Some of the gizmos because we don't want to see that box sign. Save it again. Now, just my own stuff. My Visual Studio is still responding, so just quitting it off. So let me just create the player object now. So create an empty, call it our player, and then let's reset its transform back to zero because if you don't take it to zero, it's like and anyway. So zero, zero, zero everywhere, and one, one on the scale. Then let's create a capsule inside this object. A capsule and call this player model. We will replace it later on in the series with a proper character. Okay, so my ground is really small. I'll just scale it to 100 by selecting scale. Okay, on the model, change it up to 1 on the y axis so that it's on the on the ground not underneath or half underneath remove the capsule collider because we're going to add a character control on the player save the project now we can add our character controller and if i enable my gizmos you can see that the character controller's collider is down like it should be at one now it's now it's aligned that's why you can see that nice little lines come Let's make our script player controller. Click on the new script and say create and add. 
Um, next, we will create a folder inside my assets and call it scripts. First, let's just save the project again. Call it our scripts. And drag in the player controller into the scripts folder. That's it for the script. Um, next, we are just going to go into our package manager and here we will install input system the new one it really makes things easy for input after you're done with that it will ask you to restart the editor so just click on yes and now let's wait for it to restart Close the package manager window. Let's select our player and create a new folder and call this our input. Inside this folder, we must create an input actions. Call it our player input actions. And we will edit it by double clicking and it generate a C sharp class and apply. And then we say save the asset please. It's causing an error currently. Anyway, and the new action map we just call it player. Delete this action for it's not what we're gonna be using anyway. Oh ho come on. Delete. Add and this one is gonna be our move. Just change it to a value of type vector two. And the no binding we will just delete it because we don't want to add our own up down left right composite anyway for the WSD keys listen I just press my W key listen the S key sorry um listen S key and left key is gonna be A right key should be D and uh, let's just add another up down left right composite inside the move because you will want to be able to use our arrow keys as well so up down right left arrow keys and in the up we must click our up arrow then down down arrow then for the left left arrow the right one we do right arrow and uh, that's it for this let's just add the binding for the joysticks, gamepad, left stick. That's it for this move. Now we can click on save asset. Please don't forget that. Otherwise, you will not be happy because you'll do all of it again. Just close out the window and let's save our project. Let's edit our script. So, whatever way you have to edit your player controller, I just will right click. I'll just right click and say open CS project. So if I say, let me just right click, wait a minute, sorry. Got the setup, whatever you set up. Uh, right click and now we can see this option open C sharp project. If you don't have it, then you can find how to do it on your Windows, but on the Mac it's there always. Um, and our assets, my assets, the scripts, we have the player controller. Inside the player controller, we will start by commenting, saying input. Um, just say input. And we'll do find a private player input actions. Input. Just name it input. And now we will have to enable it because if you don't enable it, then you won't get the any values really, you'll just get zero and false everywhere. So, input.enable on enable and on disable, same, we do input.disable. Next, we need to get this 
input, we need to set it, it's currently set to nothing. So we'll do that in awake, move the private, and we'll say input equals to a new, to a new player input action. And that's it. So it became blue for some reason, I'll just uh, try it again. I don't know why it became blue. So input action, okay. And we're done with that part. Now, we have added a character controller component, but we don't have a reference in our script, so let's just make a function for the movement first. Private void handle, handle input and move, handle input and move, yeah. Move and move. Okay. Call it every update. And then we'll do a slash slash movement, a comment movement, and we'll say character controller, and we'll name this our character controller with C in the camel case. Character controller, we'll add a modifier of type private. Now we need to get this also in the awake. So underneath the input, we can do character controller equals get component, get component of type. It can one type character control, right? Yeah. Okay. Now we can start coding the handle input and move function. So we will start by getting the value by doing vector2. It's actually a vector2, so vector2. We can call this our input vector, which is going to be the movement vector, really, the input vector. Okay. And we will do it, we'll get it from the input, which we defined up dot player which is our input action dot move we can access this and it's basically inside the player actions dot player which we need input anyway we will read the value by doing dot um by doing dot uh, read value yeah yeah read value okay so basically I will just write move or read value and we will read value of type um vector two yeah so just write vector two in there and that's it now we must um, get this into a vector three as well because our character control moves a uh, vector three so move direction we define one for here equals our in or two brackets just open the whole brackets and say input vector dot y multiplied by transform dot forward and then we are going to add it with our input vector dot x multiplied by transform dot right. After that, we are done with the vector 3 itself. Now we just need to move it accordingly. So we are going to write character controller, which we defined up there. And the c should be small because we don't want that direct. So c and dot move. And we open two brackets given our move direction. Multiply by speed times time dot delta time because always multiply things with time delta time which are called an update and this function is called an update. So speed count speed the multiplier for speed. So basically the current speed can be private float current speed equals just set it to I think two good value three yeah three okay. This will be changed later on anyway. Because we have different states, different speeds for different animations. Now let's hit play. And if I move, I can move with my WASD keys and with my arrow keys. And if I were to connect one to my laptop, I could also move it. But currently, you can see because multiplying with transform forward and transform to right, it is moving forward in the z axis which is the forward so that's why if i rotate it that way now you can see the z axis pointing in that direction if i do w you can see it moves accordingly and on the x axis is also turned so that's why it's working perfectly now that's why you multiply it with it so that's it for this video and the next one see you in the next one